This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, live from Samsung Galaxy Unpacked 2023 in San Francisco. So as some of you no doubt already know, the S23, which means Galaxy S23 Ultra, S23 Plus, and S23 are not the biggest and most exciting launch for Samsung, right? Not a lot of improvements going on here, but there are a few, pun intended, cameras are the focus. So we have new sensors, particularly for the main cameras on each of the phones, and the, the biggie here is the 200 megapixel main camera on the Ultra. We have the Ultra in hand. We have it for testing, so trust we will have a review of this. The idea is it can do tetra pixel binning, whatever, so it takes all those pixels and brings it down to a 12 megapixel equivalent and allows it to add more light and more color, HDR, all that sort of thing, so we'll be doing night mode testing. Uh, right now, you're not going to want to hear this too much, but comparing it to last year's model and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, when we zoom in on details, it doesn't like it has that much more when we're shooting in 12 megapixel mode, but we'll also check out 200 megapixel mode. If you're wondering, 200 megapixel gives you about a 35 megabyte file, so not that huge at least, versus about five megabytes for your usual 12 megapixel equivalent. The, four, the phones are available in four colors, this time the same four colors across the lineup, so you don't have to pick a particular phone just to get a particular color. And if you order direct from Samsung.com, they have four exclusive colors in addition to those. Matte glass backs, yay to that, and not too slippery. Sometimes even matte glass can be slippery. As always, really nice OLED displays, good top of the line phone specs. Um, and for everybody around the world, as far as I know, this time you're getting that Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, not Exynos. To be specific, it's a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which Samsung made a big deal about, oh, it being their own customized version. It looks like it's just clocked 100 megahertz higher than usual. It's And so far, looking at it in benchmarks, like on Geekbench 5, it benchmarks just as fast as the processor you'll get in the iPhone 14 Pro. So that's a good achievement there because that's always a fast processor for those of you who cross shop platforms as well. Pricing, the good news is it's the same as last year. Despite rampant inflation around the world, it's $800 for the S23, $1,000 for the S23 Plus, and $1,200 starting price for the Ultra. Obviously, if you go for extended storage capacities, you can spend more money on that. The bad news is for U.S. customers where we are is trading value used to be insane with Samsung. You get so much money for trading in a not terribly old, only a somewhat recent model phone, and now the trading value is just real or half of what they used to be. So th that's where you're feeling the pain of inflation and all that sort of thing. Now, carriers in the United States, even on samsung.com, if you go with the carrier branded device, you will get $800 to $1,000 off if you pre-order. So for those of you who don't mind being tied to a carrier and all that sort of stuff, that's where the deals are this year, but not with direct trade-ins. Of course, Best Buy and every retailer is going to be having deals. And as we move farther into the year, you'll find some plum pricing on this. But as ever, pricey flagship phones. The more exciting thing and the unusual thing in this event was actually they released some Galaxy Book laptops too. Usually the, the phones get their own event and maybe there's some earbuds or a new watch or something to go along with it. None, none of that, no new earbuds, no new watches, no bundling of those either in pre-orders, sadly. But the Galaxy Books are the kind of the exciting thing. 16 inches, the new 15.6 inches, you know. So we have a new Galaxy Book Ultra, right? Following the phone line name. And that one is pretty interesting and more powerful powerful than what they've done before, which has typically been ultrabook oriented stuff. So this one you can get with Core 7 and Core 9 processors. They all have big MacBook-like trackpads on them, by the way. Uh, but you can get this with an NVIDIA RTX 4050 or a 4070. We will be reviewing this. Uh, the sad news is that we looked at it here at the event and the 4070 shows up as only being a 60 watt GPU. For those of you who follow gaming laptops or even mobile workstations, you know, that's unusually low power. So don't expect a super lot out of this 4070. That's the kind of power we would usually see being given to something like a NVIDIA RTX 3060. Uh, you know, so mm, it's probably, it's more for the creative types, accelerate your video editing, do a little blender, that sort of thing. And the other exciting thing about all their laptops now is we finally see like Samsung famous for their AMOLED or OLED displays, right? Finally, we're getting a 3K 
AMOLED displays on these laptops. Yay! So 16 inch for that Ultra. Now there is the Galaxy Book Pro, which is available in 14 and 16 inches, kind of matching the MacBook Pro sizes. That's more of an Ultrabook spec as Intel Iris XE graphics, but you still got that. OLED display on board at high resolution. And by the way, ports on these are like what we call legacy ports now, USB-A, HDMI, although 2.0, not 2.1, are here. And lastly, one of my favorites, and I hope we get this in for review, I know we'll be reviewing the Galaxy Book Ultra, but the Galaxy Book Pro 360, and that one is a 16 inch as well. And again, the 3K OLED display on that and that Wacom EMR S Pen, which is always very precise, very good for pressure levels and something that artists adore and really hard to find Wacom EMR anymore in a laptop. If you get the 16 inch sizes, you get a 76 watt hour battery. If you go with that 14 inch Pro model, then it's a 63 watt hour battery. Battery, not much room. And even the big Ultra has a 100 watt USB C based charger, so no big power bricks to carry around. So there you go. That's kind of where more of the action has been happening this year. And again, we'll have reviews of these devices in the future. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.